Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Transfer Portal CFB podcast presented by No Context College Football. I'm your host, Dylan Rubin King. Thank you so much for joining us. If it's your first time listening or you're a, re- you're a regular listener, thank you so much for tuning in. I am joined by Andrewster and Dave. How are you guys doing today? Doing phenomenal. Yeah, I'm excited for this week's slate. Not a ton of games, but we got some good ones. Yes, sir. Week 10 already. We're in the double digits. It's week 10. We got Maxion. Maxion was on yesterday. Uh, we're recording Wednesday, so this will be out Thursday. We'll have some some action that we won't be able to get to because we're previewing here and now recapping. This isn't what we do on this on this episode. We will be joined in the second half of the show by J.D. Piquel of On3 Sports, so stay tuned for that. He'll join us to talk about some players that he's talking about and looking forward to and picking his games of the week. We've got 10 of them to talk about. So yesterday, as a recording, the college football playoff rankings were released for the first time. It was interesting to see their take on some debates that we've had, you know, the Tennessee versus Georgia, the Michigan versus Clemson. Tennessee is the number one team. So in your store, let me start with you, and then we'll go with Dave. What was your take on the college football playoff rankings? I know you had a rapid reaction. You were you're writing it up as that was going along. So what is your take on the first rankings reveal? Yeah, uh, rapid reactions on the the transferportalcfb.com. Obviously, that was me writing it as I saw it. So now I've had a little bit of time to kind of take everything in and think about it to a little bit more, you know, of an extent. I'm just glad Tennessee's won. They deserve to be one. They're the best win in the country. They're the best resume. They've got the best offense. And they're the most fun to watch. That's a pretty big upgrade as well. My biggest problem is not LSU at 10. I honestly don't think it's that egregious. I think LSU has performed very well over the last few weeks after starting off slow against Florida State. My biggest problem is with the whole Alabama and TCU, and I'm honestly going to throw Oregon in there because this is going to kind of stem into my point. The reasoning for Alabama over TCU makes little to no sense. The reasoning given by the new commissioner, uh, his name is Boo, so that's going to be a a meme we have over the next few years, was Alabama was a more well-rounded team, and TCU got down in some games. While that is true, on both extents, Alabama's also gotten down in some games. They were down with a minute left against Texas. They almost lost to Texas A&M without their starting quarterback. And granted, that game didn't have Bryce Young, so maybe they don't throw too much at that game. But we still need to call, you know, a spade a spade. Alabama has not looked great over the last few weeks, except for the Mississippi State game, in which they just murder that team every year. Alabama also got down against Tennessee. They got down so much that they lost the game. They lost to a game that TCU has not lost yet. I feel like we have to give TCU that much respect for staying undefeated. You can say, oh, Alabama's played an SEC schedule. TCU's played a Big 12 schedule. First off, the Big 12 is very good this year, but it's also very tough to stay undefeated. I feel like it's a little bit of a slight towards TCU and the Big 12. But I also want to throw Oregon in there for a second. And this may not make sense now, but trust me, in about 15 seconds it will. Oregon has an embarrassing loss against Georgia. I feel like the committee also has to take into to account that's a first-time head coach's first game ever against his former team that just won the national title. Georgia has looked good. They've looked very good. Obviously, had some shaky spots, but they've looked very good, very deserving of their number three spot. Oregon has looked very dang good against every team they've played. They murdered UCLA. Their offense is great. Their defense is great. I would say they're a more well-rounded team than TCU, and they have one loss. That's to the reigning national title winner. If we're going off the Alabama logic, we need, we need to kind of apply that to Oregon as well, or is this just going to kind of keep Alabama up? That's that's kind of my problem with this. Otherwise, I don't really have something to – I don't really have a, a lot to say about the the playoff poll. It's, it's the first week. We'll, we'll see a lot of movement this week. How about you? Yeah, so I agree with that Alabama point. I think TCU should be higher than them, uh, but it's Alabama. Obviously, they're going to try to put Alabama as high as they possibly can and then eventually try to get them in the playoff like they do every single year. A lot of people were complaining about Clemson being ahead of Michigan. I completely disagree with that notion because Michigan's non-conference schedule was garbage, and they haven't really – the best team they beat was Penn State, and Penn State – 
obviously can't be good teams. They lost they blew that game in Ohio State. But Clemson should they had that good win at Wake Forest. Clemson should be at four. Will they be there for much longer? I don't know. Uh, but Michigan at five is fair. I like I said, I think TCU should be at six. Uh, but that Oregon notion you were talking about, Andrew Drewster, it makes sense. They got blown out by Georgia, but they've been so good since then that I don't really know if you could put anyone above them or below them unless you put Al- – have them and Alabama should be in the same plane, essentially. Uh, and then LSU should not be in the top ten. I know you, you said you didn't really care about that. Uh, they have two losses, and they, they, they like Ole Miss so much for some reason. Ole Miss is not impressive. I don't think they're going anywhere, but then – they ha- because the committee likes Ole Miss so much, they have to put LSU higher than them because they just beat them. It's it's stupid. I mean, they they always they always do this every single year where they like one team and then other teams are ranked based on how that team has played and their performances. Yeah, it's- and Dylan, I don't want to interrupt you from talking. I just want to add, I feel like, and you're completely right. I don't think LSU should be ten. I don't think it's that bad. I feel like they should be in that twelve to fifteen range. The reason they're ten is for two reasons. Number one, to make Alabama have a better win this Mm -hmm. weekend and for them to have a top 10 game because a lot of these rankings end up just being good TV. Alabama LSU being a top 10 matchup is no coincidence. Yeah, that's true. And then like the last thing I get to touch on is that I know Illinois is really anybody, but they should be higher than Penn State. They, they, you, You could put Illinois at 13, in my opinion. You could put them above Penn State, Utah, or Kansas State, but Kansas State just beat Oklahoma State by 48. So Don't Illinois could Oklahoma. be a little higher, but they'll probably lose eventually and won't make it, so it doesn't really matter. That's kind of a moot point. But, I mean, all in all, as a whole, Tennessee should be one. I like that a lot. And I think, as a whole, this is a this is a fine start for the committee. I definitely agree with the rank to put Tennessee one. And I know that the, the uh, comparison has been with them – is Georgia the number one team like in the AP poll? Is Ohio State possibly the the team? I like that they go with Tennessee to start here to kind of set the standard of of what the top team in the country and their standard for that looks like. Um, overall, the top nine didn't really upset me. I get the point about Michigan versus Clemson. Um, I do think TCU probably should have been a little bit higher. Um, Oregon, I don't really have that big of an issue with with where they're at just because – you look at some of their wins, and at the time, the BYU win was a great win. But BYU has fallen off the mountains that they're they're perched upon in Utah um, completely. Like, they're a the complete shell of themselves from when they played. I believe that was week three. And so that's one thing where I really want to see how the committee looks at that because you look at their top wins, they're against UCLA and they're against BYU. Those are the top two wins. And obviously, you know, at Washington State, it's not a bad win. Um, the Cal game not an amazing win on paper but you know winning by 18 on the road is still good in that conference but the BYU one is going to be interesting to see how they gauge that because BYU it could easily miss a bowl game they could easily finish honestly four and eight like I didn't think I'd say that but that defense is god awful and Jaron Hall has been a shell of himself but We'll get into that later, but I do agree with the LSU take. I don't think that they're a top 10 team. And the reason why I say that is because before they played Ole Miss, and it's a completely different poll, but they were unranked before they played Ole Miss, another top 10 in the college football playoff. I didn't think, I thought there were maybe a borderline top 25 team going into that Ole Miss game. And they beat them, obviously, you know, handedly. Like that game was not close for, you know, the entirety of the second half. Um, but I don't think they they are a top 10 team because of that win alone. They have a really good win at home against Mississippi State. Other than that, I don't really think they have any other high-quality wins that make them deserving of a top 10 ranking. Auburn's trash. Florida quite isn't as good as we thought they were going to be. I mean, still, it's, it's hard to win at Jordan Hare and Ben Hill Griffin, though, but this resume isn't worthy of a top 10 ranking. I'd probably put a UCLA or a Kansas State there. I'd probably lean a UCLA, but Kansas State, you know, they're getting some wins that are worthy of that as well. And the Big 12, we know what the Big 12 is. Um, you know, it's just going to cannibalize itself. But Kansas State will probably be one of the last teams remaining. So let's let's keep on chugging with the college football playoff, talk a little bit. Which team ranked in the college football playoff rankings yesterday will not finish the season ranked or multiple teams? Oh, we're going to start with who's not going to finish ranked. Okay. Um, Texas already has three losses. Why, why are they here? 
Why? You 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 played a one point game against Alabama, and granted, you didn't have your starting quarterback for three of those quarters, but that's also a long time ago. A lot of football has been played since then. They have not looked stellar like some people thought they would after Quinn Ewers returned. They've looked good, but we also need to look at what Quinn Ewers did uh, just a few weeks ago, where he had like a 35 or 38 completion percentage. Just not good. Just not good at all. They have to play Kansas State and TCU over the next few weeks. That's probably two losses, if I had to say. Kansas State, they play this week. I believe we're picking that game. So I'm not going to give a pick on that one just yet to spoil anything. But TCU's offense, it's going to be tough to keep up with them if Quinn Ewers has one of those days where he's not the most accurate quarterback. Or maybe it's another one of those days. Uh, Freaking Xavier Worthy has not – he's had some games where he hasn't looked amazing. His hands are a little shaky. If TCU can beat them – I, I just don't see a world where you can put Texas in the top 25 if they finish 7-5 and five with losses to K-State and TCU over the next few weeks. Yeah, I had Texas on my – I wrote it on a couple that I think. So I have Texas. That was one of mine. Thank you for getting rid of that for me. The next one for me, um, NC State, I don't think will be in there much longer. I think they lose to – are we picking this game? We are picking Wake that Forest. game, so I'm not going to bring up that one. Uh, I just don't really – they're just so disappointing this year. And I could I see how many potential losses. Th- three, potentially, they could lose. They could lose this week. They could lose to Louisville, and they could lose to UNC, which knocks them out. That gets them to five losses. Even if they have four, I don't know if they should be ranked. And then another team who could potentially get knocked out of Syracuse. Yes. I completely so agree those, with that like, one. I mean, Syracuse was so much fun. There's just a great story. If they beat Clemson, yeah. If they beat Clemson a couple weeks ago, that was that two weeks ago. Uh, that was because they had Notre Dame last week. Yeah, lost. so they beat they beat Clemson two weeks ago. It's a completely different Syracuse team. I think they beat Notre Dame last week. If they beat Clemson, they were just kind of down on that game. And then, I mean, then they have Pitt, Florida State, Wake, BC. Two losses in there knocks them out. So my two would be NC State and Syracuse, two ACC teams. ACC's down this year. Wouldn't shock me if they both were out. You also have to point out Garrett Schrader and Garrett Williams were injured in that game against Notre Dame. That does mm-hmm. play a part. I, I am not saying that that would have won them the game if they were playing, but it's it's, it's still huge. Yeah, it would have been, it been big with the Williams side. Schrader, 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 Schrader was just not playing well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I do think Oklahoma State is one to consider as well. I think they're quite vulnerable at this point. They might finish on the outside looking in. They might even be favored in every game from here on out. They play at Kansas, home against Iowa State, at Oklahoma, and home against West Virginia. But I wouldn't be surprised if they finished the season 8-4 and four just because of the Big 12 and the way it is. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just want to add something. Oklahoma State's only a two-point favorite against Kansas. That feels so weird. So mm-hmm. weird as bad as Kansas has been over the last few weeks. I mean, you can't really do anything other than that two points because they got their doors blown off them last week. It, that was just embarrassing. It, it was. And, you know, it's probably fair, but it's still weird. Yeah. And perhaps it's an overreaction to say that I think they're, um, you know, an eight and four, maybe even seven and five team and the rest of the way, just because of the way they looked at Kansas State game. Um, the defense has been really, really, really bad. Uh, Mm -hmm. all year for Oklahoma State. Like, since week one, they gave up a bunch of points to Central Michigan. Um, Like, I think the only game they really looked competent on defense was against Arizona State, and that's Arizona State. We don't really count that. Yeah, (laughs) that doesn't really count. So, you know, that's that's four losses, in my opinion, that that are within reach. Like, Kansas could beat them, Iowa State could beat them, Oklahoma could beat them, West Virginia could beat them. And the the way that they're playing right now, I, I wouldn't put it past them. NC State, I also had written down, Tulane is another one that I might write down as well because they have a really tough schedule to finish at Tulsa. I don't think that's a gimme at all. Yeah. Home against UCF and SMU and at Cincinnati. I think they, they could finish with a one and three record the rest of the way. So as much as I like the green wave, as much as I like what they've been doing, this is a really tough slate for them at the end of the, the season. We'll have to see what they're really made of in the American to see if you know they're worthy of that group of five uh, automatic bid in the New Year's six. Um, but now let's talk about the teams that are ranked outside of the playoff that didn't make it that we expect to be um, in the rankings at the end of the season. There's a team that is seven and one, not ranked, that I, I think could very well finish 10 and two. It's Liberty. 
Liberty has been playing very well this year. A lot of people thought that, you know, maybe they're going to take a little bit of a step back losing Malik Willis. No, they, the quarterback play hasn't been amazing, but that's not really the reason they're winning games. They have Arkansas this week. They're 13 and a half point dogs. I think they can win that game outright in Fayetteville. I don't think Arkansas is that good. If they win that game, they're going 11 and one. If they lose that game, they're finishing the year with UConn, a team I'll actually talk about later. Virginia Tech, who, my gosh, I'm not going to go into another freaking state of Virginia. How do your power five teams absolutely suck rant? And then maybe a little bit later. And then New Mexico State. I mean, that's freaking New Mexico State. Liberty should go 10 to 2 minimum. Yeah, Liberty was one of mine. Good thing I wrote down two. I think Coastal Carolina could end up uh, undefeated and in a group as a group of five automatic bid. Uh, they got to beat App State this week, Southern Miss, UVA. They'll beat UVA and then JMU. So it's not an easy three game Sun Belt stretch. But if they can win those four games and win out, they'll be undefeated and they'll go 10, 11 and one, right? So Coastal goes 11 and one. They should be ranked, and they should get that group of five bid. So, on Bell, it's just very good right now, I think, that all those teams are very competitive with one another. And if you have one, if Coastal can separate themselves from the pack, they'll be in the, they'll be in the rankings. Yep, I had Coastal written down. I also had Washington written down. Um, there are a couple losable games at Oregon, at Washington State. Oregon State's not a gimme either. Uh, but I think this team is going to heat up at the right time. I expect Washington to finish the season ranked um, and compete for that, that top Pac-12 spot. That one against Oregon, that one might decide the Pac-12 championship spot right there uh, in a couple weeks or next week, I believe. So always excited for that that rematch there in the Pac-12 North. The North doesn't really exist anymore, but in this world it does. How about uh, which team ranked you know, um, in the uh, I'm sorry, we're going to skip on to that biggest storyline heading into week 10. This is the double digit week. We're really in the home stretch here. Yeah, well, I'm going to avoid the SEC. There's some amazing games in the SEC. I'm going to let y'all take them if you want. I'm going to go to Wake Forest and NC State. I think this could end up being one of the biggest games in the ACC this year. Is it going to decide who's going to go to the championship? Probably not. Not at all. But Wake Forest just got absolutely blown out by Louisville. Louisville just blew them out. Uh, let, let me re- repeat, Louisville just blew them out. Way far, the team a lot of people thought would be top 10. Obviously, they're not. That defense is atrocious. And now they're going to play an NC State team that has a very good defense. A lot of people are down on them after the Leary injury. They saw what Chambers did against teams like Syracuse. It, it just never worked. And then... Dave Darren put in true freshman MJ Morris, and he had a pretty dang good day against Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's defense isn't bad by any means. It's not elite, but it's not bad. Now you get to play an awful defense at home, the fans behind you, your first start, once again, at home against a team that just got absolutely embarrassed. If NC State, can win this game. They get all the momentum back that they had going into this season. And they only have two losses right now. They could finish 10 and two. It could very well set up a massive game between a possibly nine win NC state team and a 10 win UNC team to end the year in one of my favorite rivalry games on that Friday night. Yeah. I like how you took the exact opposite uh, NC state take that I did earlier. Uh, That's what we're here for. So, for me, I'm not really kind of – it's not really focusing on a game per se. I mean, of course, it is kind of focusing on a game with Tennessee and Georgia, but I'm not focusing on the game right now. I'm focusing on the player. This game, Hendon Hooker Heisman. If Hendon Hooker can pull off this upset – I know they're, they're ranked higher, but they're nine-point dogs. If he can win this game for Tennessee and Tennessee wins this game, they stay number one, his Heisman – candidacy is a favorite right now i think he's around even money but this will like cement him as the favorite to win the heisman and who would have thought at the beginning of the year that hendon hooker would be the guy we're talking week 10 tennessee's won the country and hendon hooker but well, not you did yeah of course dylan but <laughs> i think if he wins this game and he plays well which i expect him to he's far and away the favorite to win the heisman and he should 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 get it I'm, I'm going to stay in the SEC. Uh, of course, I'm wearing all orange here. That's not 
that's not necessarily on purpose. I, I've been a fan on, of Tennessee all season long. I think a week or two before the season started, I said they would be undefeated coming into this matchup. This matchup would decide the SEC East. It would decide the college football playoff berth. This week in the SEC is unlike any other we've seen in a while because this is the first time with multiple top 10 matchups in the SEC since week 10 of 2018, exactly four years ago. I know we talked about maybe LSU's not a top 10 team, but the numbers are the numbers. Whoever plays in Atlanta on December 3rd will be decided this weekend. And I, I really don't think that, you know, th we shouldn't p p give this, you know, uh, a, a slight because the SEC is always going to have top 10 teams. We're always going to have elite matchups like this. It seems like there's a top 10 matchup in the SEC every week, but this will really decide who's in the college football playoff. This will really decide what we think of a Tennessee, a Georgia, and an Alabama, and if LSU can make a run into the SEC championship. Um, can Alabama make the playoff with two losses? Like, that's that's something that we're going to have to decide. Um, you know, if they win out, maybe LSU falls out. What if Alabama beats the winner of Tennessee, Georgia, down the road? Could they make it in as the first two-loss team? Things get really weird and hairy there. So the SEC is going to be a really exciting uh, this week. Tennessee, Georgia, I've been looking forward to this game for about three months now, four months now. Um, so I'm super excited for that. I'm glad I was right. I just didn't think Tennessee would be ranked above Georgia at this point in the season. That's super exciting. Um, and, but the fact that they're a nine-point dog and they're the number one team, I need to look up when the last time that happened was because that's really crazy. Um, but let's keep getting crazy. We're it's in week 10. Frankly. What was it? I said it's disrespectful to Tennessee, frankly. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I know it's in Athens. That's, you know, hardly anybody's going to win there. But this is a much different Tennessee team than we've seen in literally 24 years. So this is, yeah, I don't think that this should be like a one or two point uh, spread, in my opinion, one way or the other. But let's mm -hmm. keep getting crazy. Predict one upset this weekend. And Drew, I'm sure you're you're amped up for this one. Yeah, I'm amped up because I just spent like five minutes talking about it. I'm taking NC State over Wake. This is a pretty easy pick for me. Last week, we saw an ACC team that just had a pretty embarrassing loss, failed to get up against a team that isn't great in Notre Dame. This week, I'm going to say Wake Forest kind of follows suit. They're, they're, they're going to struggle, especially on the offensive side of the ball with that NC State defense. And I don't think they're going to be ready for what MJ Mars hits them with. I like it. Yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't sure if I wanted to stick with my – Upset special pick, but I'm stuck with my main one. Um, I'm going to take Notre Dame over Clemson in big college football playoff um, implications. Uh, Notre Dame was able to run over Syracuse as good defense. I know, like we said, Garrett Schrader was hurt. They had guys hurt. Uh, I think Notre Dame, if they can get the run game going against Clemson and DJU plays as poorly as he has played, Notre Dame can seal this game at home and just shake everything up. Wow, we're on the Notre Dame train all of a sudden. We're back I hate on Notre Dame too. I hate them, but I just I like I like craziness, so I'm gonna take them. Well, this might not be as a, a headliner, but I, I'm gonna go a little bit crazy and off the grid here. Vanderbilt has lost 25 straight SEC games, and I think that's gonna end this weekend against South Carolina. Now I know South <laughs> Carolina fans hate the hell out of me right now because I said that Spencer Rattler was gonna get benched after the Missouri game during the Missouri game. Vanderbilt's only scored four offensive touchdowns in five SEC contests this year. They have not looked great. But with Mike Wright finally healthy again, I think we could see the Vanderbilt that we had so much fun talking about and watching at the beginning of the year. Give me the Commodores over the Gamecocks. I don't care. They haven't won an SEC game in what it feels like before the pandemic. It might have been. I don't remember exactly when Probably. it was. Probably was. Yeah. So give me Vandy, man. I I'm riding the Vandy train out here. Um, they're not going to be in the college football playoff implication. If you're Whoa. caring about that, don't oh, don't watch the South. Bro, don't watch Vanderbilt. You, South you heard Carolina. what Clark said? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. They're Come the best on. team in the SEC. Yeah, they'll they'll be there soon, as we all know. Vandy's got a lot of promise, but let's talk about the games with the most college football implications this weekend. Besides Tennessee, Georgia, that's an obvious one. Mm -hmm. And Drewster, you were amping this up before we hopped on. What are you gonna What are you gonna spoil us with? This is going to sound weird, but I think the game with the most college football playoff implications outside of obviously, you know, the games with possible playoff teams, I'm going to say it's UConn UMass. Look, <laughs> if, you, if UConn wins this game by a lot, and I mean a lot, they're a favorite by like 12 at this point. 
UConn looks like a significantly better team than a lot of people projected them. They're going to be a possible bowl team, six wins, rather than some people said oh, it's another one and 11 or two and 10 year for the UConn Huskies in football. What Jim Moore has done in his first year is astonishing. But let, let's think about UConn fans. Obviously, you're happy. Shout out, Jack Mack. Michigan, hello, because you might actually not have the worst non-conference win of all time. UConn's a bowl team. Maybe if some other stuff happens in the country, obviously you would have to lose a game for this to kind of happen because if you're undefeated, you're making the playoff no matter what. Say you lose to Ohio State, you go 12 and one. And then say like the Big 12 just kind of sputters and the, you know, the Pac-12 sputters, maybe Clemson has a loss. What if that UConn being a bowl team and with how you how they just got absolutely demolished by Michigan, what if the playoff committee is like, you know what? That's honestly not the worst loss. It's not as bad of a loss as we – or not as bad of a game as we had previously thought. You know what? Maybe Michigan does deserve. They they made a bowl team look like a freaking high school team. Michigan, congratulations. You should be a UConn fan, as we all are at the Transportal CFP. Man, I, first, I thought you were off your damn rocker with, with that peg. UConn and UMass. I was like, okay, you got to spin this around somehow. But all right, it makes sense. Somehow you made it work. Dave, what's your pick? Yeah, that's actually quite beautiful, pretty poetic how you spun that into it actually kind of making sense. Um, my pick is TCU, Texas Tech, and pretty much every subsequent TCU game for the rest of the season for them. Because if TCU goes undefeated, which they could, they could go 12 and 0 and win the Big 12, you cannot keep them out of the playoff, in my opinion. I don't think you can do it. So just everyone should keep their eye on the Horn Frogs. Ooh, my dog just jumped and fell. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> TCU, uh, keep your eye on the Horn Frogs. Every game they play will be an important one. Yeah, I mean, Alabama LSU for me is the obvious answer here as well, but I'm going to shy away from even that. Uh, Texas, Kansas State, to your point, it, it will impact TCU's case as well because Texas plays TCU, I believe that's next week, and TCU already has the win over K State. If K State wins, TCU's win over them looks better. But if Texas wins in Manhattan, then a win in Austin for the Horn Frogs would certainly put them on the brink of the top four going into next week, and I think would give them momentum to win out the rest of the way. Uh, well, th- we were right at our time here for when JD Pakel is going to join us from On Three Sports. Not quite here just yet. I'll give him the note that. We're hoping to have him ju- jump in, but I'm curious what your guys' take on um, just the, the overall state of the ACC. Like, that's that's one thing that I think is, is going to be interesting to watch because Clemson still has a ways to go. Like, I, I think Clemson is a team that has a, a, some losable games going down the road. You talked about NC State. You talked about Wake. Um, Syracuse might still have a chance for the championship. So I'm curious what you guys think about – you know, the state of the ACC and, um, you know, what we could expect for the championship. Cause I think that's a hot topic. Who is going to make it out of the ACC? Yeah. Um, I'm, I have to Google the ACC divisions every time because I never remember them. I'm now I'm seeing. Right now. Yeah. So Clemson's obviously going to win the Atlantic. Uh, every other team has two losses and they have the tiebreak over everyone. Yeah. So they're going to play UNC in the title game. And I think that's actually a very scary spot. For Clemson, because Drake May, man, Drake Drake May is just so freaking good. I have a tear in my eye every time I talk about him because of how good (laughs) he is. The leading rusher for UNC has also been very good. Oh, wait, that's also Drake May. He's just been incredible. Josh Downs is obviously an incredible wide receiver. Marion Hampton, shout out Laika. He's been very well. He's been playing very well as well. UNC's defense is what's going to decide the game. Can Gene Chizik make up for pretty much every bad game, which has been pretty much every game outside of, you know, I'm, I'm going to give him a little credit. The defense has looked better over the last few weeks, but I'm still a little upset at what he did against Florida A&M when I had my first ever bet. Shout out Gene <laughs> Chizik for making Florida A&M look like a power five team. Obviously they have some very good players, but Florida A&M also had half their team locked out of the game. But UNC, I love this offense. I love Drake May. I think he's going to be a top three pick next year if he wants to be. I totally Drake lied May. About, what? I totally lied about Clemson having losable games. I thought they were playing at Louisville next week. Yeah. yeah, they're at home for that. So I don't think Clemson's losing. So, Never mind. So what about this? So I don't mean to cut you off, Andrew. Sir. I just found this interesting. So let's say Clemson could very well go 4-0, 12-0 in the ACC championship. 
if UNC wins out, they should beat UVA. They beat a ranked Wake Forest, beat Georgia Tech, and then a ranked NC State. And if UNC beats Clemson, UNC is a shot at the playoff. They should. They, they should be in the playoff. Yeah. That'd be very, very interesting if we get there. But I would love to see that. And, of course, they have the <laughs> extremely important win against Appalachian State. Sure, they gave up 40 points in the fourth <laughs> quarter, which is borderline illegal. They won the game, though. They won the football game. That's all that matters. We count wins, not points. Well, we count points to get wins, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, the ACC has been a lot of fun to watch, but let's kick it off here. We've got on three sports, J.D. Pakel with us joining in right now. J.D., do you got us? Got you loud and clear, boys. How we doing? Doing All great. Right. Thank you doing so much great. for joining us. Uh, so excited to have you on. So we want to jump right in. We know we don't have a ton of time, so let's get in right to the nitty gritty uh, player focus. We're looking at one, two players each, one from the Power Five and one from the Group of Five slash FCS side of things. So, JD, who are you looking at this week? Who's going to be uh, on your TV this weekend? You know, I think a guy that's going to have a huge impact in this week's game is Tennessee, Alabama. A guy that I'm watching about Brew McCoy, a guy who has gotten a fair amount of attention, but Jalen High has gotten a lot of shine. Cedric Tillman's kind of their alpha dog who continues to make big plays for them when he's in the lineup. He's just kind of getting back healthy, back to this game against Georgia. So I am fired up to see what Brew McCoy does because I feel like he's a guy that's going to get a little less attention than those other two. And if you guys remember correctly, that game against Alabama, I mean, he had the catch to set up that game-winning field goal. So what he adds with his physical presence, I'm, I'm super excited to watch him at the Power 5 level. And then in terms of the, the group of five, which this is a fun segment. I love that y'all do this. This is a great idea. Uh, how about John Rice Plumley, a guy who's just lit it up all year for UCF. It was obviously at Ole Miss for a really long time and played just about every position you could imagine for them, whether he was you know running up from the slot or playing quarterback. So um, just a guy that's done a phenomenal job so far this year, and I'm excited to see what uh, what he does this coming Saturday. One more from the FCS for you from my alma mater. Uh, how about Cornell's quarterback, Jamison Wang? I think he was a transfer from Air Force. He's made that program just a totally new beast and so excited to see what him and the Big Red do uh, this coming Saturday. I believe they play Penn, if I'm not mistaken, but I'll have to double check on that. So, But, yeah, excited for that, boys. Who, who, who else y'all got? Well, I'm going to go to a team I think I've talked about four times already. I'm going to go back to NC State and MJ Morris. <laughs> and once again, MJ Morris, his performance against Virginia Tech doesn't get talked about enough. I thought he was the reason they won that game. Now they get to play away for us. Defense that just got obliterated by Louisville and Malik Cunningham. I'm not going to say MJ Morris is Malik Cunningham, but now we get to see MJ Morris in his first career start at home. NC, start, NC State's first time starting a true freshman at home in what seems like forever. He's going to be massive in this game for NC State, who still only have two losses. So they can obviously have that nine win versus 10 win UNC matchup later in the year that I talked about. For the group of five, Coastal's still seven and one, and it seems like no one talks about them anymore. Grayson McCall, we love him here. We are a Grayson McCall fan podcast. We had him on for the interview. He was an amazing time. I want to talk about one of his weapons. Jared Brown's the second leading receiver for that team. He's going to have a massive impact on this game Thursday night on the teal field against Appalachian state. We know that this coastal versus app state game always has fireworks. It's going to be so fun to watch one of the best atmospheres in the group of five. Can't wait to watch Jared Brown have some big plays for the shots. I love coastal man. So I'm going back to the Tennessee Georgia game, but I'm going to the other side of the ball. I'm going with Tennessee safety Trayvon flowers. Flowers is leading the team in tackles with 46 tackles. He's got two picks on the year. The guy is everywhere for the volunteers. And I think that Tennessee wants to stop the run game, which means they have to get Stetson Bennett to pass. If Stetson Bennett is going to go back and pass the ball a lot, which, you know, he could be a little shaky sometimes. Stay away from Flowers because he will jump around and maybe take a pick six back. And then group of five, I'm going to my Jags. I love South Alabama. I wish they would have beaten Troy. I want them in the Sun Belt Championship. Running back LaDamian Webb, when this guy gets going, South Alabama wins games. He's averaging five yards a carry. He was the Sun Belt Conference Offensive Player of the Year last week, 162 yards and three touchdowns against Arkansas State. If he has a big game, South Alabama should win this game. And then I think they're sitting at 3-1 and one right now in the conference. They have that loss to Troy, but if they go undefeated for the rest of the year, they end the season 4-0, Troy drops one, South Alabama should be in the conference title game. 
Ungo, baby. We love it. Uh, well, Andrew Stewart talked about an NACC quarterback. I'm going to go with another one. Brennan Armstrong. I think Tony Elliott has absolutely ruined this Virginia offense. That was mm-hmm. third in the country in total yards last year and second in passing yards. Now they're 94th in total yards, 78th in passing yards. I don't even know if they've scored 20 points all season long. That's how bad they've been. Against the worst defense in the ACC, Brennan Armstrong and the Cavs, they need to finally find a pulse. They're scoring half the points they were last year. They still have some talent. Like, it's still there. It's just the coaching is not, and the execution is not there. So I think this is their chance to finally show what they're capable of once again. And then on the group of five side, they're independent, so maybe that's not group of five. I don't know. I'm going to go with Jaron Hall uh, from BYU because they've completely fallen off, as I touched on earlier in the show. A lot of the blame has gone to the defense, and rightly so, because really since that Oregon game, they've probably been the worst defense in the country. But Jaron Hall has not looked like himself as a passer recently either. And if he's going to save his NFL draft stock, He's got to go off against Boise State and will them to a win, snap this skid against one of the best defenses in the country. I know he's got the talent around him. He's one of the most talented quarterbacks in the country, but they really need to get something going because this BYU team has just fallen off a cliff, man. It has been absolutely brutal. So we're going to jump in. We've got JD for this now. Our game picks, we've got 10 picks we have our eight games and then two games that are our group of five game of the week and our power five game of the week. So let's kick it off with the Thursday night fun belt action, App State and Coastal. JD, we'll start with you. My, my, my man said it, Grayson McCall and Coastal. It's hard to pick against them right now. Like you said, seven and one. So I'm going to roll with Coastal. I think Jamie Chadwell is going to be an interesting guy to watch as these coaching carousels start to turn. Hope he stays with the Shanta Clears just by nature of kind of just wanting to have him stay with that program. It's, it's, it feels weird having him be in any other colors. Uh, but for this game, I like Coastal to win, and I think Grayson McCall is another big day. Yeah, just two teams that have amazing stories. Obviously, we can go back to 2020. And even the last two years with Coastal, they've just been such a fun team to watch. And obviously, App State, the magic that they had to start the year. I just think Coastal is a better built team. And like you said, it, it's just impossible to pick against Grayson McCall. I'm going to take the shots as well. Yeah, I'm on the same boat. I think McCall outduels Chase Bryce in what's going to be a really, really, really fun game. And I'm taking Coastal like plus 135 on the money line, whatever they are. I'm going to Kirk Herbstreit spot here because I don't want to I, – I have Coastal written down, but I'm like starting to consider putting down App State just to avoid the college game day moment. But I do <laughs> think Coastal is the better team. Um, App State, since the early weeks when they were kind of America's sweetheart, they, you're kind of not really sure what you're going to get from them week in and week out. They had that stinker against Texas State, and really I don't think anybody saw it coming. Um, and they just haven't really looked like a complete team since early on, since beating Texas A&M. Coastal hasn't necessarily either. Their defense has been really poor. Offense has been a little streaky in recent weeks, but I think they find it on Thursday night and they tear up the turf field. Give me Coastal Carolina. Pac-12 Friday night, late night on Friday night. Oregon State and Washington. Oregon State's ranked for the first time in, I think, nine years. Yeah, I like Oregon State in this one, actually. I think Washington's a program that's going to continue to trend upward and maybe be better in the future. But for this game, I just think Oregon State as a program is is in a good spot. And I believe they – is that at Oregon State or is that at Washington? In Seattle. In Seattle, okay. Yeah, I still like Oregon State to win that game. And just the, the kind of tough brand of football they've played. We've seen them play some other programs super tough. I mean, we think about that USC game when USC went to Corvallis. And, I mean, Oregon State just about gave them all they could handle. So, I think you'll see that same kind of approach from Oregon State. I think they win that game. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Oregon State as well. Just don't give Washington too many free possessions. You talked about the USC game. Oregon State was turnover happy in that game. Just don't give Washington too many times with the ball. Obviously, we know Michael Penix can do anything with the ball. He's been great this year with Kalen DeBoer. I'm going to take Oregon State, though. I'm actually not so fast, my friend. I'm going, I'm going Washington. Uh, under the lights in Seattle on a Friday night, I think Michael Penix shines, and they uh, – I don't even know if you can call this an upside. I think they're favorites in this game. They're four and a half point favorites, but I'm taking Washington in this game. I think Penix throws for like 450 and four cuts and a win. That would be really impressive because Oregon State's got the best pass defense in the Pac-12. Like I, I feel like this is going to be UW's biggest test um, as an offense because the, the secondary of Oregon State is tough. 
Like they were, they were playing really tough against that talented USC, uh, you know, receiver group. So I think they're going to have their work cut out for them. If Oregon state's going to win this game. I don't know if that, out, that offense can outscore UW though. So I'm going to go with UW. I do think it's going to be a close one. Maybe UW doesn't put up the 40, 50 points that they were earlier in the year, but I do think it's going to be a lot of fun early morning on Saturday, air force and army. we got to show some love to the troops. Got to show some love for the academies, right? I mean, air force, Early in the year, I mean, they were just a covering machine. And then I think they kind of ran into a little bit of troubles. But uh, even with that being said, I love so much what Jeff Monk is doing at West Point. Still can't play against Air Force. It feels like these academies kind of come in waves, if you will. Like like one academy kind of just has the upper hand for whether it's the duration of a season or a couple of years. We saw the whole Army-Navy streak be for close to like, what, 15, 18 years, something crazy like that. Uh, I think Air Force is hot right now. As a as a program for 2022, maybe not the you know streaking necessarily, but I think Air Force has more on that day uh, to beat Army. Yeah, Air Force got off to that hot start. Talked about they've really struggled over the last few weeks. Army's just kind of struggled all year. I don't really see them winning this game. This is just an Air Force game for me. Yeah, I mean, Air Force was a cover machine. I like, like you said, JD. I, I was riding them for a couple of weeks, and then they lost to Wyoming, and I kind of gave up. But yeah, I think Air Force is the best service academy team by a little bit of a margin. They they beat Navy thirteen ten in that slow game, but I think they do the same thing to Army, and they win this game probably by three to six points. Could be for the commander in chief then, depending on what happens with you know. I mean, they they could lock it up, which is I think high stakes. But sorry, go ahead, Neil. Absolutely. I mean, the service academies have definitely been up and down this year. Air Force, I thought was going to be a 10 win, 11 win team, and they still could be, but they just haven't looked like that dominant force, no pun intended, um, out in the, in the Mountain West. Um, I am going to pick Army in this one, though, so I'm going to go with a not so fast to all of you guys. I do think that Air Force's defense is not quite as dominant as I was anticipating. I thought they were going to be far and away the best team uh, defensively in the Mountain West. I feel like this Army team is due. I, I think they've they've had some tough games where, you know, the defense just kind of got ran over. I think they're going to come to play in this one. I like Army in a really close one. They always play close ones in the series, so I think, you know, I can expect nothing less than this one. Let's go to the Conference USA, UTSA and UAB. I'm taking UTSA. I think Jeff Trailer's got that program headed the right direction. I mean, it's not necessarily like the magical year that they had a season ago, but I still think they're the better team. I uh, like UTSA to win that one. I think they win it actually relatively comfortably, boys. Ooh. Uh, I wanted to take UAB because I freaking love Dwayne McBride, but then I realized how many times have I won picking against UTSA? It's not many. <laughs> I, I'm going to cut the losses and I'm going to take the meat meat nation here. Yeah, Meet Meep Nation. I love UTSA this year. They are going to win the CUSA. I hope I don't jinx them, but I love them this year. I picked them uh, in the pregame gamble, the uh, preseason gambling show. That was one of my one of my favorite uh, futures. UTSA here. Oh, man, I'm in a spot again, y'all. You all keep doing <laughs> it to me. Um, I mean, I've been so high on UAB for a long time. I love this program. I love the story of this program, but I also love UTSA and I love this team right now. I was one of the few people throughout the season, the last couple of weeks that didn't rank UTSA just because I, I wasn't sure that they were quite there yet. And I definitely think they are now. And I think as well as JD said, I do think they win this one comfortably. I like this offense, the best wide receiver trio in the country. I don't know if you can really debate it, maybe Tennessee when they're all healthy, but they've been absolutely putting up numbers. Frank Harris has been phenomenal. Give me UTSA. Let's jump to the SEC. One game that is actually being overshadowed, which is kind of crazy because this is a top 10 matchup in Baton Rouge, Alabama, and LSU. Yeah, it's going to be a fun one, boys. Baton Rouge, Death Valley at night. Like in terms of an atmosphere, I would do some crazy things to be at this game. Uh, Alabama's kind of been that program all year long we've talked about. They don't look like typical Alabama. They don't look like a Nick Saban coached Alabama team with all the penalties. Uh, LSU has been playing really good football. They've scored 45 each of the last two games. Jaden Daniels is kind of finding his tempo. Even with all of that, as much as like you would like to talk yourself into taking LSU in this game, I think Bama's just got too much personnel. Uh, I think this is a motivated and a little bit annoyed Nick Saban coached Alabama team, which is dangerous for everybody else in the country. I think Bama gets a big win in the rain in Death Valley in a top 10 matchup. Yeah, Halloween was just a few days ago, but the scariest thing is still an upset Nick Saban. I do think Alabama wins this game, but historically, 
How many times has Alabama blown out LSU at night in Death Valley? I don't think it's that many. I know, especially recently, I think Alabama wins, but I think LSU probably keeps us within that like 10 point margin. I don't think it's yeah, a I think LSU out. covers what 13 is what it opened at. I think I it's think a pretty high spread for covers. LSU being yeah. at home. Yeah. I like that. It's a good bet. Yeah. I mean, again, the three of us are going to agree and put Don in a tough spot, but I think it'll be a close game until like the fourth quarter uh, Alabama. I just think they're a better team. LSU's overhyped to 10. I don't really see it. They beat Ole Miss. Sure. But I, I never loved Ole Miss. I think Alabama is just a better team. It's not the same as going in to Tennessee, going to Nayland and losing that game. It's Tennessee's a much better team than LSU. Alabama is a better team than LSU. Alabama wins this game. I'm picking Alabama, but what a spot for Jaden Daniels to really kind of prove himself a little bit. I've been high on him as the LSU starter. I was hoping he would get the job when he transferred. I'm happy that he's balling out the last couple of weeks. This is the Jaden Daniels we've expected to see since, you know, that 2019 game against Oregon when everybody was talking about him as a future first round pick. I, I think he's going to show out, but I think Alabama and Bryce Young are going to show out a little bit more in the under the lights. I like Alabama in this one. Texas versus Kansas State. Big 12 action here. Boys, we got a, a Texas team going to the Little Apple that's favored by two and a half after just getting absolutely embarrassed in Stillwater. Then Kansas State, that same Oklahoma State team, they came to their crib and they blew them out 48-0 to with a backup quarterback. So the fact that Texas is favored here gives me some pause and makes me feel like somebody knows something. I'm curious to see where the Texas culture is at. Like that's a kind of a buzzword with Texas every single year and – We've seen one loss turn into three, four, five losses for them before. I think this is a new refocused Texas team. Maybe they're not where they want to be yet, but I think that a lot of the things we saw last year that caused them to have such a drop-off, I think those are mitigated a little bit. Texas is more talented. Again, that line gives me some pause. I think Texas actually wins this game in Manhattan. Yeah, that spread is incredibly weird, seeing that Kansas State is – you know, a top 15 team in the country and Texas now is top 25 because the college football playoff, but it still feels so weird with how they just performed. And we, we just saw Quinn Ewers put up an absolute dud. That being said, I'm still going to take Texas. It feels weird, but that's because college football is weird and we all love it. Yeah. So I originally had Texas and then I thought about it. I'm flipping over. I'm going K state just because they just dominated Oklahoma state. Like that game. Unbelievable. Wow, they just blew them out of the water. Uh, I think age is age, age is, is playing correct. Uh, from my understanding, he I, I looked at it that yesterday. I couldn't find anything on it. Um, we'll see. I'm with that. That's, that's a big deal if he plays or doesn't play. We'll see. Yeah. I, I didn't see anything. I know he was questionable for TCU, it was like a game time decision. So you mm-hmm. would think so, but also they just scored 48. And I'm like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, brother. But yeah, yeah. We'll see. that's true. That's true. I mean, maybe that that could be why the Lions in Texas is favor. But I'm going to stick with K-State and Deuce Vaughn. Um, even with the backup quarterback, I think they could still pull it off. It really – it's it's a weird one, but I don't want to keep this trend of us sticking with the same pick, so I'll go K-State. I think regardless of who K-State starts a quarterback, I think they win this one. I picked Oklahoma State last week. That was my worst pick of the year. Kansas State <laughs> won by 48 points. I'm not picking against Kansas State for the foreseeable future. I'm going K-State in this one. Clemson, Notre Dame. This will be a fun one. So Clemson, I think, is actually in kind of a interesting spot. And the bye week came at the perfect time for them, right, with all the conversation about who's playing quarterback, you know, this, that, and the other. Uh, to keep it brief, I think Clemson just has the personnel to match with what Notre Dame has. I don't think Drew Pine is like a game breaker by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and say that Clemson wins just because of what Notre Dame can't do offensively and taking advantage of that secondary that we're, we're still sort of have some pause with probably. I mean, they've, they've played better as of late, but all that to say, I like Clemson in this one on the road in South Bend. Yeah. Notre Dame had a great win last week against Syracuse. They made Syracuse just look absolutely not good. Now Grand Syracuse has injuries, but Clemson, it really is going to come down to does DJ just not turn the ball over. If they don't turn the ball over, I'll take Clemson by a mile. I just don't want to give Notre Dame any free possessions. In fact, with Clemson's defense, I would not be surprised if Notre Dame had given a few free possessions to Clemson. So I'll take Clemson. Yeah, so I feel like I got to kind of – this was my upset pick. I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to take Notre Dame just because I like chaos. Uh, 
all my friends know how much I dislike Notre Dame, have a disdain for it. My dad went to Miami in the 80s. So I don't like Notre Dame, but I kind of want to see some chaos. I think if Drew Pine isn't awful, and I think DJ will turn it over because I don't trust DJ at all. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Notre Dame, and I think the defense holds up, and somehow they pull this off with the wrong game. Going so fast, my friend, and going Clemson in a blowout. I think I don't think Notre Dame is is with this Clemson team. I think Clemson team, you said it by week at a great time. Let's go to the ACC, wrap it up a little bit. We'll go speed round. Wake Forest, NC State. No, we're good, man. I, I, we can also, I mean, I have a few minutes here, so no, no need as long as I'm out of here by one. But I'm sorry, what, what was what do we got here? We got Wake Forest, NC State. Love it, Wake Forest, NC State, man. I just think. A Devin Learyless NC State, Wake Forest, kind of their back against the wall kind of mode. I think that offense does enough and does enough to kind of put pressure on that NC State offense to try and match them. If it becomes that kind of game, I like Wake Forest, Sam Hartman and company. I think they get it done. I feel like it would be a little bit weird if I said I'm picking NC State earlier and not take them here with how much I've talked about them. So I'm going to take NC State at home. <laughs> yeah. Uh... For me, I preseason I want I had Wake Forest going eleven and one. They dropped that game to Louisville. It was pretty rough. Sam Hartman bounce back game. I think Wake wins this one by a touchdown. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Wake Forest had a, a collapse of a lifetime. Like that third quarter was the worst quarter I've seen of college football by any team all season long. I don't think they repeat that on the road. I think they get a big time win and stay alive for the ACC title. Our power five, or sorry, group of five FCS game of the week is a top five matchup. Sacramento State and Weber State. We're going out west. Who do you got? Yeah, boys, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't watched either of these programs one time. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I'm going to go Sac State in this one coin flip kind of game uh would be very fascinating to hear y'all's take on this but I'm, I'm going Sac State I'm going Sac State for the record yeah Sac State had an amazing game against Idaho last week that was must watch television at 1 a.m my time my thing is the cats of Weber State have just been going through their competition they played a great Montana State team and I'm, I'm going to take the cats here I think Sac State's not really in a spot where they're going to let people down. I just think this is such a great game where I actually agree with JD. This is a kind of a coin flip game. I'm going to take the cats in an upset here. Yeah. I, I mean, I, these are the FCS experts, JD, not me. I'm kind of in the same boat as you, but I like the Hornets. Uh, they can't, they had that win against Idaho last week. I like them. Uh, give me Sac State. Yeah. I've liked Sacramento state all year, but I do feel like home field advantage is going to play a factor here. I like Weber state in an afternoon game. Um, give me an upset. I like Weber State in this one. I think they're going to jump in the rankings quite a bit. And lastly, the game we're all talking about, the game we're all going to have our popcorn out for, our recliners kicked back for, number one, Tennessee, number three, Georgia. J.D., bring it. Boys, this one was uh, was a tough one to pick, right? Like, I went back and forth on it. It's hard to, to pick against the national champions, right, in Georgia and how much experience they have from a quarterback standpoint, from what Kirby's installed there. Are they the most experienced team on defense? No, but they're getting there and they've got talent in spades. The thing that I can't get past is if I don't pick Tennessee and they end up winning the game, I'll feel like I didn't trust my eyes because my eyes have told me Tennessee's going to score with anybody. They're going to force you to keep pace. And I've seen Georgia stop start against Missouri, uh, stop start. I mean, let's call it what it was, Kent State. That game was way closer than it should have been. Uh, stop start against Florida. And so you can't stop start against a team like Tennessee. So for that reason, I'm trusting my eyes here, picking Tennessee to beat Georgia in Athens. I think it's a three-point victory, 41-38 balls. I love the score prediction. I'm going to just go off of three letters. H-H-H, Heisman, Hendon, Hooker. This is his Heisman moment. He dominates this Georgia team. They win by two possessions. I love it. Yeah, and Drewster kind of stole my uh, Hendon, Hooker, Heisman thing that I was going to go off on. But, yeah, I agree. I think that uh, he's going to go off. It's going to be a huge win. Feels like 98. Give me Tennessee. Last two times I've been on this preview pod. I had one pick and then I changed it. And I was right both times. I wrote down Georgia for this one. I've been high on Tennessee all year long. I'm not stopping now. I'm switching to Tennessee. Give me the Vols. I think they finish the regular season undefeated. They go into the SEC championship and they make a run for the playoff. No matter what happens in the SEC, I think they could win or lose uh, the SEC championship. I think they're a playoff team if they beat Georgia. 
What a run we've had. J.D. Piquel, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you? Man, appreciate you having me on. Happy to do it anytime. Uh, you can find our stuff on the On3 YouTube channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at J.D. Piquel. It's P-I-C-K-E-L-L. But boys, y'all have a phenomenal show. Like I said, I appreciate you having me on. And uh, let's do it again soon. Thank you for joining Absolutely. us. Thank you so much, J.D. Make sure to go follow him and follow us. Transfer so portal, all our stuff. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week.